What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Dr. O Show, episode one. Topic is relentless entrepreneurship. We have Mr. John Geiger here with us. What's going on, bro? I appreciate you having me. Hey, no, it's thank you for being here, man. I know. <laughs> it's a Sunday. We're out here working hard on a Sunday. Um, so a little bit about John. Uh, dude, I just want to talk today, shoot the, shoot the shit, learn a little bit about you. Um, you know, we've known each other for quite a few weeks now, months now. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to take the time just to... About a year. Yeah. About a year. I want to take the time to learn a little bit more about you, bro, and your story. Because I think it's so fascinating. You yourself, um, I had no idea who you were until you came in here. And then uh, I started to learn a little bit more about you. But I got to know you as a person, I think, before I even really knew yeah. what you did. Um, so it was pretty cool how things played out. Um, let's start off, dude. I want to hear about kind of like your childhood, growing up, what things were like for you. You're from Pittsburgh, right? Yep, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um from from grade school all the way to college, I went to eight different schools. So I think it was three uh, moves around a lot. So I moved around Pittsburgh a lot, which then helped with like diversity and understanding different cultures, which helped in design, which I think to this day still helps. Yeah. So I moved around a lot in Pittsburgh, but we moved around. What part of the city? Uh, I lived in the city uh, mostly. I belonged to Lawrenceville. I lived in Green Tree. I lived in McKee's Rocks. My mom was from Youngstown, Ohio, gotcha. and she always used to yeah. say that they'd go over the bridge over yep. to Pittsburgh to go out and party. Yeah. <laughs> Pittsburgh's definitely a party city, but um, I moved around quite a bit as a kid, uh, mostly for basketball, mm -hmm. uh, from school to school, so it was always moving every couple of years. Closer? Yeah, get a little closer. There you go. go. That's better. <laughs> I told you. Yeah. So you moved around a lot for basketball and stuff. Yeah. Play AAU basketball, and then, um, you know, third grade moved to a different school, fourth grade went to a different school. Moved around quite a bit. You didn't go to college at all? Uh, yeah, I went to college. So from third grade all through college, eight different schools all together. So three different colleges, two different high schools, uh, and the rest were all in grade school, moving around. So gotcha. it was like, yeah. Do you think that, that was a good thing or a bad thing for you growing up? Because I, mean, I know I, some people growing up, they're like, yeah, I went to a bunch of different schools. I hated it just yeah. because I was always having to make new friends. I was always having to meet new people. For, I mean, for yourself, other people were like, no, I kind of liked it because I, I got to meet so many people yeah. and I got to you know, do all that stuff. Um, it was always basketball related. Mm -hmm. So it was more like <clears throat> I was going in a better situation. Yeah. Uh, now looking back on it, you know, I give props to my family because they were moving too, like building, uh, buying a house or renting or whatever we were doing mm -hmm. at the time. Um, they were moving around for me. So. Yeah. Did they ever, did you ever play any other sports or was basketball? It was like? just basketball. That was your yeah, main thing. Yeah, That's kind of like what it was for me. I mean, I, I wanted to play football, but I focused on baseball just because my, you know, my dad and my mom were always like, no, like you're good at this, just yeah. stick to it. And sometimes I'm like, damn, like I wish I would have done some other stuff. Yeah. It's crazy too. Now thinking about it, there was never, you know, I'm in fashion now or design now, but yeah. there was never a time where that was an idea. I was in the, I was obviously in the shoes, yep. in the clothes. That's, I mean, I could tell you early on stories of that, uh -huh. but never was I like, I want to get into fashion because it was always basketball, basketball, basketball. Because that was going to get me to college, whether it was, you know, full scholarship or just whatever, just going to get me to college. And then, mm -hmm. you know, Pittsburgh mentality is kind of like, I don't know if you heard about this, but a Pittsburgh mentality is kind of like a, uh, like you go to school, go to college, you meet somebody, you have a kid, and that's like the rest of your life. Like, just, that's just very it. old school, yeah, blue collar. Very old school, yeah, very blue collar. Yeah. Old school, Steel City. That's kind of how it is. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's how it was in Long Island, too, yeah. with my dad growing up and like, you know, his dad kind of mm -hmm. the same situation. Very good. So for those of you who don't know, John is a world renowned, I would say, you know, shoe designer, mm -hmm. uh, as well as clothing entrepreneur. Uh, you guys started in shoes and then yeah. you kind of transferred into clothing and you're There's, doing a little bit of both now. Yep. There's always this like misconception or like you have to say a designer, a forward designer. I just say a designer overall. I mean, I think that my definition of a designer is just like anybody. The only difference between me and the next person is I've had ideas and I've followed through and put them to a product. Then you know, someone in, you know, Europe is wearing it right now. So mm -hmm. the only difference between me and another person is I have an idea, I follow through with it, I get it made, I produce it. You, you execute, know, yeah, execute it. You're an so, executor. So many yeah. people have ideas, but they never mm -hmm. actually exactly, finish it. Exactly. Right. And I think a strong thing about entrepreneurship, which is why kind of we're talking about relentless mm -hmm. entrepreneurship today is because, you know, just even with me and our company, we got it up and rock and rolling so fast, but so many people have these ideas, but they don't actually follow through and execute mm -hmm. on it. Like there's that point where you're either going to like go in or you're not going to go in. You're yeah. either going to go all out or you're not going to go all out. And you're kind of one of those guys, I mean, from the second that we talk, like, no, I got to do this, I got to yep. do that. And you mm -hmm. finish it, like, you, you know, you actually make it happen. Mm -hmm. So with regards to, you know, shoes and clothing and design, like, did you ever have any jobs growing up when you were playing ball or did you just... I got some, I got some good ones for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear um, these. Yeah, I mean, uh, my, my aunt and uncle had a pizza shop, so that was mm -hmm. 
Door, like, let's say that I was in college or in grade school. That's what I would do on the summers. But then also, too, I would do it during the school year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then right around uh, my senior year of high school, I started working for a porta john company. Um, clean, cleaning out for like the porta bodies. No I would deliver. I would deliver them. It was called Mister John. It's a Pittsburgh. No company. way. And what's funny is I look back on that now and and been like that taught me so many things because I was so embarrassed of mm-hmm. it. But then I just kind of grew of being like you know the people working here they're just like me. Yeah. Um. But I mean a lot older. But, teaches you humility. Yeah. Right. But so, it also teaches you just to get stuff. Yeah. Know? So what's what happened is when I was my first year of college, the next year I kind of just dropped out and mm-hmm. I was going to go to a local school like a CCAC. It's like a two year school. Yep. And from that year all until, you know, I graduated college in 2010, for four or five years, I did that job. So I went to school, played basketball, and did that job. So in the summertime, I would do it full time, but in the school year, I would do it, you know, periodically. But clean, I would deliver the toilets and then pick them up and clean them out. Use a wand, suck them out. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty That's disgusting great, job. Yeah. Bro. I mean, <laughs> I had to wash dishes. So when I was in college, do my doctorate in Atlanta. Uh, I was going around trying to apply for jobs and stuff, mm-hmm. and nobody wanted to, you know, hire me for like this part-time ordeal, because mm-hmm. um, that's really all I wanted to do was just like a part-time gig. And you know, I'd been in the the hospitality industry before, yeah. and finally somebody hired me to just start just washing the dishes behind the bar. And I mean, just literally taking all the dirty glasses, putting them on a rack, putting them in the dishwasher for thirty seconds, taking them out of rack, mm-hmm. putting it on top, unloading it, putting another one in. I mean, that was just it for like yeah. four or five hours at a time, man. So everybody's got to go through stuff like that, though. I feel like, you know, the people that I know who, who actually are really successful mm-hmm. have all done something like that before. Yeah. So. Yeah, Mr. John, Porter Jones. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, man. That's super funny. So um, let's get to you. you got a ton of tattoos. Yeah. Uh, funny story. I don't know if you heard about this, but uh, we have a healthcare clinic, for those of you who don't know, who are watching this for the first time. And uh, John has come here for some of our services before. And uh, we were... <laughs> <laughs> when you're talking about Kelly, yeah. so we had the, we have this woman. I'm just gonna call her Miss Kelly for you know HIPAA compliance purposes. Uh, but Miss Kelly had uh, no idea who John was. And John's, I mean, he's he kind of looks like a badass dude. Yeah. He's got all these tattoos. Who comes face up face tattoos and stuff? Yeah. Face tattoos and stuff. And so John's in PT with Miss Kelly, and he's doing his thing back there. And Doctor Rose is doing his thing, and Ron's doing his thing. And Kelly comes to the front. She goes, Connor, who is that guy back there? He's got like all these tattoos on his face. And, you know, Miss <laughs> Kelly's like a typical South Tampa mom. She's yeah. like, I've, I've never seen anybody like that. I would like catch that her like looking at the corner of her eye. Like, is this guy going to attack me <laughs> soon? And I'm over like this. Yeah, I know. She would be working out and she'd be like. Kind of got her eyes on you the <laughs> yeah. whole time. And so she's like, yeah, he's got like all these tattoos. And I'm like, Miss Kelly. I'm like, you know. With all due respect, John's a pretty prominent figure in, in, in this area. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah, he's a, he's a world-renowned shoe designer. She goes, no. I was like, yeah. She's like, him? And I said, he is. I said, you can never judge a book by his cover. Yeah. He is an unbelievable person. He's an unbelievable shoe designer. She was like, no way. And ever since then, every time, she's like, yeah, am I going to see John today? Like, I don't know. I can't, I, I can't say. I haven't been here. No, I've been there in like a month. Yeah, it's all right, though. Yeah. You come in when you come in, when yeah. you need it. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your lifestyle, bro. Um, I mean, I know that you're always kind of on the go, go, go. And a mm-hmm. lot of people who, you know, have that type of lifestyle, how about you? They're either really strict with their shit and they have everything like to a T, like they're doing their lunches, mm-hmm. their meals, their workouts, they're super regimented or they just don't do it at all. I mean, what are you kind of like? I've had my ups and downs. I really yeah. just lost weight. So I'm in, I'm in a good phase right now. I yep. think I kind of got the niche of, uh, trying to figure out traveling for eating purposes because mm-hmm. that's the hardest part for me. So let's go. I'm going to El Salvador. So Tuesday, um, there's no direct flights there, so i got to connect in Miami. And then from Miami to go there. I already know where in Miami I'm going to eat as soon as I get there yep. in the in the airport. Good. Like I already have this already, already set. So, yeah. so I've been there so many times, so I know where to go, mm-hmm. go what lounge, what I'm going to eat. And then I know in El Salvador where I'm, where I'm going to eat at because I already have it planned out. Uh-huh. Uh, the biggest for me is just food. So eating correctly because on the go, I would usually just – eat bullshit mm-hmm. but i started you know started gaining weight and mm-hmm. i know how to like i know exactly what to do now i have it pretty under control yeah um because you've been doing it for so long you know i should yeah. eat this much chicken i should have mm-hmm. you know this much you know yeah. veggies this much carbohydrates yep. you know what your body kind of reacts mm-hmm. to after i've been, fa- I've been so fasting a lot lately too yep oh um, every day bro until yeah. like one yeah, I i've had a coffee today was it mm-hmm. yeah. i normally don't eat until like 12 12 30 when yeah. i go home to let my let my dog out midday yeah and then I, it started when I started uh, fasting more and more and more. It started becoming like uh, I could do it longer. Yeah. So I can sometimes I only eat like once a day if I wasn't working out the day or anything like that. 
Yeah. So traveling purposes, that really helps as well. Yeah. So I go to Radiant Church and at the beginning of the year. They do this whole thing called fasting and prayer. I fasted and my, my, my pastor and I were kind of tight. And so, uh, you know, he has this challenge where you try to go seven days, no food, seven days. no food, Sheesh. no coffee, no nothing, straight water. Well, I couldn't do straight water. I did coffee. Coffee. Yeah. So I did coffee for like, I think I made it five days. And then I went to Fresh Kitchen and got three bowls and just slammed <laughs> them. <laughs> seven days. That's, that's, that's pretty tough. It was a long time, man. That's pretty tough. Yeah, it was a little difficult. Yeah. Um, you were just telling me about El Salvador. That's where your manufacturing facility is. Uh, one of them, yeah, yeah. And all these dudes in machine guns. Yeah. When we land, it's uh, pretty secure. That's straight, crazy. Straight to the office. Yeah. And then at the office, it's like, a, um, you know, two gates go up and it's like a militia that searches each car. Uh, every person gets stopped. They go through just about everything to make sure everything's good. Um, I n- I've never looked at El Salvador as like somewhere dangerous. Like I've never been there and felt danger, like and been in danger. But uh, like I said, <laughs> you'll see like a, a truck will fly past you and will have like a like a machine gun on the back of it. Like one of the ones that are like attached to the truck. Man, I'd be crapping my pants. <laughs> yeah. It's all it's all part of the army there. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess they're looking out for everybody there, but it's just a different. It's a different lifestyle. It's a different lifestyle. I mean, could yeah. you imagine walking out of the office right now and just seeing some dudes in a tank just rolling down the yep. street, just chilling, machine guns just chilling like, out hey, the back side. Walk to your car. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy, man. That's crazy. So, um, let's get back to it. Um, have you always been into clothing design, or you know, have you always been interested? Like when you were in class in grade school and stuff, were you just like drawing shoes, designing stuff, or? Uh, yeah, I got like some. how'd you like how'd you fall into that? Um, I would probably say around like third or fourth grade is when I started becoming really into shoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Penny Hardaway and Jordans were out, but Penny Hardaway was like the main one. Um, I think I gravitated towards him because his story, like they had like little Penny commercials and stuff like that. So his like rollouts for shoes were uh, to me were like cooler than Jordans, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean they had like Spike Lee and stuff like that, but I think around third or fourth grade is when I started really being into shoes. Um, and then I started having problems in school. So I was very creative at the time, but everybody thought that I had issues. But you look back on it now, you'd be like, my parents will, my mom will tell me now that, that I wish she didn't take it. I went to a Catholic school at that time. Uh-huh. So they would say like Christmas time, we would uh, make cards or something. I would draw like <laughs> me and the Ninja Turtles wearing like Jordans or something. <laughs> and they would say like, you're supposed to draw your family and it would just be like a really cool picture. Yeah. But they would be like, there's something wrong with him. And everybody thought there was something wrong with me. They thought of ADHD and all these other things. It was yeah. just me being creative. It was just you being yeah. <laughs> So they would tell me not to wear certain shoes to school. I would still wear them. I would draw on them, like paint them. Yep. And then that led into like really uh, um, footwear. And in fourth grade was the first time that there was a uh, cobbler. His name was Bucky's. He would do, uh, he was a cobbler for boots. It was mm-hmm. like old school, like he's like 70 years old. In Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. Um, and then he would also work with the penguins on uh, putting the, the skates, spikes, spikes skates, back on yeah, skates. Yeah, he would work with them. So I would go there, and sometimes I would take shoes and bandanas or something, and tell him like sew it on. This yeah. is in fourth grade. No way. Yeah, his name is Bucky's. He just died recently. Yeah. So this is just kind of always been something that's been mm-hmm. instilled into yeah. you, and you've just kind of run with it. But like I guess at the time, you know, there was another before. I'm not saying before me there was no one in fashion, but like mm-hmm. in the arts, with like Andy Warhol's from Pittsburgh, and you have like rappers, and you have musicians, or you have art uh, athletes. But no one ever came out of Pittsburgh and being like, you know, of the arts besides like Andy Warhol and a couple other people. So when did you officially start your company, John Geiger? It's John Geiger Co., right? Yeah, I mean, it's just John Geiger. Yeah, Co. is for the LLC. But yeah. um, uh, 2017, I think we launched. We didn't release product until like 2018. What made you actually say, you know what, I'm going all in. I'm, I'm starting this company and I'm like, I'm going to do this thing. Um, I think... Early on from 2010 to 2013, 14 is when I got to work with Nike and I got to see like the business side behind uh, of the business of just fashion or just footwear in general and how it was made. Yeah. Once I learned how it was, actually shoes were actually made um, from scratch, and then I became more into it and uh, trying to understand I would have my own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from 2014 to 2018, it was just like that in between phase of trying to figure out how I was going to do it. You know, I was still doing, trying to do custom stuff like customizing Nike shoes because I couldn't fully make the shoe myself. Mm-hmm. And then when I found out, like a manufacturer, I think 2018, me and Sean launched a brand. You and company. Sean launched yeah. a brand, which I got. Sean, I, actually, Sean I got a bone to pick with that man. Wow, what I got a bone to pick with Sean, man. <laughs> I saw my sister, my sister's my office manager, walk in to the office the other day with a pair of John Geiger shoes uh-huh, on. I, I said, know. "Where'd you get those?" Heard, she goes, "Sean gave them to me." They might have had a date. I don't know. I, I said, "Sean <laughs> gave them to me." I said, "What?" I said, Sean copped you a pair of shoes before he copped me a pair of shoes. So I'm going to have to have a conversation with you, Mr. Sean. <laughs> That's funny, though. 
It's your sister, right? So you guys, are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's my sister. I guess that they went to a lightning game or something yeah. just for the heck yeah. of it. Yeah, they're friendly together. I mean, that's <laughs> cool, whatever. But um, are you guys partners, actually? Are you and Sean partners yeah, in the company? Yep. So you are business partners. Yes. We won't get into like yeah. the, the actual intricacies yeah, yeah. of that. Um, but I always kind of wondered what that role played. Um, partners I mean, are he's tough, just, man. He's just the business side. It, yeah. work, it works out very well because I've, I've been in business with friends before. Yeah. And it's never been something like this. It has. Uh, yeah. He, he's the business side. You're the creative side. Yeah, you guys stay yeah. in your own lanes. Yeah. I mean, there's, I'll give, I'll give, I'm obviously I have to say yes or no to certain things and he has mm-hmm. to say yes or no to certain things. But like, yep. uh, how Sean helps me in design aspect or selling aspect is I'm the guy that like, um, could tell you what's going to come out like next or we're going to tell you what's cool next. Right. Yep. After after everybody jumps on that bandwagon, I'm moving on to the next thing because I'm a creator. So you're a step so, ahead. Yeah, I'm a step ahead. So let's say that this table comes up. This table's gonna be cool. And like next year, I'm like, oh, I want this table in my house. Yeah. And once everybody gets a table, I move on to another t- table. Yeah. Because that's how my mind thinks. As I'm always moving forward. Yeah. The way Sean helps is Sean's the guy that wants to hop on that. No disrespect. He, we we talk about this all the time. How it helps. Yeah. He's the guy that don't know what's gonna be cool. Yeah. So I got I got to show him what's cool. Mm-hmm. And then he wants that. And he jumps on. So. That. After I'm ready to move on from certain silhouettes or colorways or something like that, who are like, we should run it back because now it's popular. Where do you yeah. get that kind of futuristic mentality from? Because that's a gift, man. Yeah. It's really hard for you know a lot of people to kind of predict what's going to happen mm-hmm. next, whether it's markets, fashion, yeah. restaurants. I mean, just in Tampa, like all these restaurants are popping up now, mm-hmm. and they're all kind of like same vibe, same feel, yeah. same type of food, same type of lighting. So, I mean, that's a talent, man. Like, truly, yeah. that's yeah. that's a gift. I mean, even if we work on a new silhouette, like our our uh, our new slides, um, like I know that's going to be. A hit. I've never owned a pair of slides. Yes, yeah, so I know they're going to be a hit. So our productions are like a lot bigger than usual. Yeah, and it's kind of one of the things like he says, trust me, and he'll be like, okay, yeah, put the numbers up, man. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. So um, obviously, each of you have a role. You have a key. Let's talk about your struggles, man. Um, mm-hmm. I think that you know we can dive into that just a little bit. But what is the largest struggle that you've ever been through? In your company, mine? I think it's my. Oh. It might be my. my um, What's the largest struggle? Like, obviously, we've all had you know certain yeah. lawsuits, legality stuff like mm-hmm. that. But I mean, the struggle that you've had, would you say that whether it's pertaining to the design aspect, pertaining to the business aspect, like what was the biggest point where you're like, I don't know if I want to do this. I mean, where ever has that been that point? Uh, I, there was never a, there was never a point where I said you know this might not work. Yeah. It's my name, so it's yeah. like I live and die by. But I think that there's been ups and downs, obviously, like lawsuits or things that have happened moving manufacturers is always ups and downs. And what I learned is nothing's ever going to be perfect. So the only reward I get from working so hard is just more work. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, it's just like, yeah. There's People always going to be yeah, something to do. Family, there's always going to be a challenge. Yep, my family thinks that, like, you did really well. And not shot that my family in the bus, but you're doing really well. You're doing really good. So, like, it's going to be easier. No, it's just a lot harder now. And it's a lot more. Um, more money, more problems. Yeah. And then with uh, another big thing we deal with is now we're scaling and growing. Yep. So we're going through our first raise. And um, what happens in this point is, you know, we can keep growing the way we are. But when you start doing more products and more bigger productions, that means more money has to be up front. So be- let's just say before, mm-hmm. like. Our PO for the next three months for silhouettes of our colorways are maybe like $100,000, something like that, right? Mm-hmm. If you grow to where we're at now and now there's shorts and there's clothing and there's this, mm-hmm. our POs are sometimes like 600000 now yeah. up front. So the reason why you need capital is so you can grow. Pre-order. Yeah. PO, PO. Yeah, so our, like, our POs are like, you know, I am never I never do pre-order. It's it's just like the, you know, you put the POs in first, mm-hmm. like shorts, and you won't get them until August or whatever. Yeah. So how um, far in advance do you have to buy that we're, stuff? We're like, like six months, a year? We're almost like December now. Wow. So I go there in El Salvador on Tuesday, mm-hmm. and I'll leave there with samples that will come out in December. But I will put the PO while I'm there, so yeah. I'll just sit there and go through the materials. So it's planning yeah. way in advance. Like I'll, I'll be there for a week. I'll probably come up with maybe like thirty different silhouettes or, st- or colorways of the GF ones and other shoes we're working on. Dope. Yeah. Dope. So our collaborations. So well. then your future goals, like with the company, I mean, are you guy that's gonna want to like grow this John Geiger and then sell it to like a larger, like you know, like a Nordstrom or yeah. something like that. Do you always want to have? You know, your John Geiger brand yeah. to kind of run with it, like Armani and stuff like that, you know, I mean, and have, I, have retail stores. Because, I mean, there's so many different yeah. routes that you can go. Have you thought about that? Um, we show we showed full collection. What I mean by full collection is clothing, shoes, everything. We showed full collection in Paris in 2020 right before COVID hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing like you did again. a fashion show. Not a fashion show. It's called like, um, like a private showing. So retailers around the world come and buy a product for their stores. Yep. Or they'll put a PO and then you'll get it eventually. Yep. Um, we're doing it again this June, so we're doing Milan Fashion Week, then Paris Fashion Week, and then uh, London Fashion Week. 
So we'll have if a you show. You need a model, it. man. Yeah, well, I, I got some good <laughs> nah, feet. No, we don't have no models. I got some good feet. No, there's no, no more models. It's just like, you know. But yeah, yeah, you're so just we'll, showing them all your yeah, collections. We'll have, and stuff. A, we'll have a showroom of the collections and then we're going to go back into retail. So that's going to be pretty crazy. So it's going to be like every retail in the world, just about. No way. Yeah. That's, Outside of the that's country. That's big time moves. We don't we don't like do it in the country because we do direct consumer mm-hmm. so well. So we'll pick a couple of retailers, but nothing crazy. Yeah, that leads me next to like, what's your marketing tactic? Because like <laughs> my marketing tactic when we first started out was like business to business, like find business in the area that were successful, mm-hmm. right? Get and this is a tip for all of you who are watching this right now. What my what my kind of model was is I, I branded myself right because I have a service mm-hmm. right, and then I went and I found other companies in the area that were super successful at what they did. And I found a way to tie in what I did with what they were doing. And then I had them post on their social media. Like I created content for them to post on their social media gotcha. accounts, tag me in it. And now I was tapping in uh, like these larger businesses who had a large following mm. and they were pushing me out to all the people that they knew, but we were both helping each other out. It's like, what, what was your marketing tactic from the start and even up to this point today? Mm. Cause I mean, you were limited at first. Like you, when you first yeah. started out, it was like limited stuff. Like I you mean, only it, buy so much yeah, stuff. Limited really helped with like, um, a drive for people really wanting the items mm-hmm. because it was very hard to get, but it wasn't like I was doing it on purpose. It was yeah. just, we just couldn't make any more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I mean, I have a lot of celebrity friends that, yeah. you know, would just wear, wear the clothes or shoes outright just for being friends. And then that led into, you know, just everybody wanted How'd them. you get tied in with them? Like what I type mean, just we talking through, about? Like ball yeah, just, players? Yeah, just, re- just relationships. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I hold relationships to this day from, you know, years ago of mm-hmm. musicians, athletes, uh, uh, just about everybody. And then I think the marketing scheme has always been the quality of the products because it's like my, I always say like my biggest marketing scheme is like word of mouth. So once people, once people get the items in hand or wear them, people are like, what are those? And then it will turn into them coming to the website or something like that. Yep. But, um, yeah, my lifestyle has also helped cause I'm a figure. So, yep. you know, I work my ass off. So I show what I get from it reward, you know, work for reward and then a lot of people buy into that story mm-hmm. which is a true story so yeah yeah which i've really never done that stuff yeah. like I, i'm i'm not one of those guys who i try to stick most to like family and business uh-huh. pertaining stuff on my instagram but it's you funny know. because we used to say it was like stunting yeah but when it becomes your everyday thing it's not really it's like, kind of not yeah. yeah it's kind of like people just be posting this stuff only yeah. because like they're proud of it i mean yeah. obviously you have those you know certain people out there that are always just posting yeah, yeah, yeah. the same shit and yeah. it's like bro we get it like okay yeah. you know you got a lambo yeah. like, cool <laughs> you know like good for you for working hard but yeah. at the same time it's like there's a point where it's like all right now yeah. you're just trying to be like yeah look at me uh you've never really been that way though which you travel a lot man yeah. Yeah, I saw you. You stay in some of the coolest places, bro. Yeah. Where's the best place you think that you've ever been? <laughs> ever been? Ever been? Like, if you have one spot on, on that like mm. tops your mind, probably Santorini. Santorini, Greece. Greece. Yeah. I've yeah. heard beautiful things. Just because where we stayed there was just crazy. Um, so my birthday last year, so yeah, good time. Yeah, really good time. <laughs> I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. All right. Um, you know, I think that with our company, we've got, you know, three core pillars um, to empower others, enhance ourselves and evolve our community. Right. Mm. And so with your company, obviously, you guys are a fashion brand. And something that I, I've told myself, like I always wanted to do is whenever I talk with these you know, people who are of high caliber individuals, they, mm. you know, they're making a difference in the world uh, with whatever they're doing. Like, <clears throat> do you have anything that you're shooting to do with your success? Like, at the end of the day, like you ain't gonna be able to take your Rolex with you. Mm. You ain't gonna be able to take any of this shit with you. Yeah. So, what is that lasting impact that like you want to leave other people with? Like, what is what does John Geiger want to be remembered for? Um, specifically in footwear space, just because when you look at the biggest footwear brands, they're all like Nike, Adidas, whatever. Mm-hmm. I think that we. It sounds really crazy, but I think you can get up at some point. Nike started how they started. I mean, it's really far fetched right now, but yeah. I want the brand to be like somewhere like that. And I think that if we can get on the right path, that's where it will go. Mm-hmm. I think that will be a long lasting thing. Like, you know, every brand you think of, Louis Vuitton, whatever, those are family owned names. So I think I wanted to keep it my name and keep it family owned for the rest mm-hmm. of my life. And then after me, hopefully. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure if I answered the question correctly, but you are. I mean, we, we live and die by this, uh, this thing called like the medium. Mm-hmm. So the medium is just like high quality materials that aren't usually on footwear. And that's what I'm known for. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm starting to get known for. Yeah. Like Chenille or the fabrics we put on footwear, not usually for footwear. I've been told no many times. Mm-hmm. And we put them on footwear and we sold them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just go around. Isn't somebody. that fun how just that works? Just go around somebody. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, we have this medium where it's like super high quality, but then also affordable. So we're trying to get the prices down so that everybody can have them, but mm-hmm. also 
if the quality is just like a Louis Vuitton or a price point. What's the price? What's the price of a pair of shoes go right now? Uh, GF ones are two twenty. The okay. Zero Zero Two is like three twenty, three fifty sometimes. Those are, our, those are those were our highest selling items. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, it's fair. I mean, yeah. you walk into a Nordstrom and you're looking at some of these shoes like Balenciagas. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, they're going for eight hundred ninety five dollars, yeah. bro. It's just name, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And they're all made from some of the same materials, mm-hmm. right? It's yeah. just it's just the hype around the name, yep. and the brand, and yep. I mean that's what comes down to that marketing yeah. aspect. Do you guys do any sorts of charitable work at all? Uh, we do in Puerto Rico. You do. Yeah. Yep. What do you guys do down there? Um, well, be, <laughs> before my lawsuit, I was uh, EA Sports. I had EA Sports, and then uh, no way. Uh, yeah, so I was a creative director for EA Sports. Were you really? Yeah, uh, which I got fired because of Nike, but I throw them under the bus. <laughs> yeah, so um, I had an EA Sports collaboration for uh, for Madden. Yeah, so we did all the clothes and shoes in Madden, and then we we were gonna take it for the basketball game. We're gonna take it to Puerto Rico and do the court there, and we're giving back we're giving back items and clothing yep. and stuff like that, which we started to do. And then it kind of like fizzled out. So your give backs a lot in like the physical stuff, yeah, like just the because, clothing and yeah, the footwear and the shoes, because you have access to it and you have yeah. a lot of extra stuff, I'm assuming, yeah. at times. I mean, it, it's just one of the things too. It's like sometimes when you give money or you give a check, you don't know really what's going. I'd rather yeah. give it to kids in need of footwear oh, 100%. Or, or, you know, Puerto Rico buys walking a lot. Mm-hmm. So footwear and clothing is like my biggest thing. Yeah. That's huge. And I'm sure it's pretty cool, like, you know, if, whenever you go down there, because you live down there six months uh-huh. out of the yep. year, right? Yep. Yeah. So when you're down there, like, you just see some random kid, like, wearing your shoes I'll on the side of the street. Yeah, I give shoes all the time. Isn't that, like, does <laughs> that, like, does that hit different? Like, What's crazy is some of our, uh, some of our, a lot of sales come from Puerto Rico now from living there. Really? Yeah, it's like word of mouth. Yeah. That's cool. Uh-huh. Where much I've, I've been in at? like I've been in a club in Puerto Rico, and there's kids wearing the shoes. <laughs> no. Yeah. So where where would you say most of your sales are too? <laughs> I would probably say New York, the biggest cities. Yeah. L.A., New York, Pittsburgh, LA, New York. Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the, the biggest ones. Yep. I'm actually headed to Miami in a couple of weeks. Oh man. Thirtieth birthday, bro. Thirtieth. I know. You're young. How old are you? You're 37. what? 37? 37. 37. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could say that, which is another thing. Like I look at a guy like you, and I'm like, man, like you're you're so far advanced like in your in your career but then i have to bring myself back to like grounding i'm like okay he's been doing this since 2017 yeah. like so you've been doing it now 17 was that eight seven years mm-hmm. almost gonna be seven yeah. years here soon like it takes a while for you to really get yourself grounded mm-hmm. and whatnot and through the maneuvering the, the ups and downs yeah. seven years it's crazy ah, it is crazy <laughs> well listen man thank you for taking the time to come out and chat with us uh for that those of it? you, yeah, yeah, no, man, 30 minutes, like, you know, we don't need to do anything too long, too crazy. Right. Um, for those of you who want to get in touch with John, uh, or not get in touch with him, but follow him and see what he's about, you can find him on Instagram. It's going to be at John Geiger, Geiger underscore, underscore. Yeah. and you can see him, uh, what he's about, check out his brand, buy his clothes, rock him <laughs> on the streets. Very good dude, good heart. Uh, making a difference. John, I'm appreciate to, you I'm coming I'm trying to get on, adjusted bro. before I get out of here. Uh, <laughs> we'll see about that. And how about when I get my shoes? <laughs> no, right? <laughs> when I get my shoes, Just maybe. Think, what, 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 um, what size does she wear? I don't know. Seven and a half. I can't maybe. believe she pulled up in some shoes and you don't have them. She rolled in. You know, any like, pair? No, not yet. I want to get a pair. I got to buy some from you. No, I got my own. I got to buy them. I got you. I, got my I should have brought them today. I didn't even think about it. That's all right. We'll get it out. What size you wear? 11. 11. Done. I got you. John. Thanks for coming out, bro. Appreciate Appreciate you guys. Yep. See ya. Thank you for tuning into the podcast. If you liked this video, please click the like button and subscribe. This podcast is being produced with the hopes that it will impact the lives of many people throughout the world. For more information on Elevate Health, visit elevatehealthfacilities.com and schedule an appointment with a qualified healthcare professional for any of your desired needs.